Welcome to lecture 39 on measure and integration. Today, we will be looking at a special topic which is called various modes of convergence for measurable functions. So, uh, topic for today's discussion is modes of convergence. Uh, let us uh, recall some of the ways of convergence that you might have already looked into earlier courses. So, let us take a sequence of functions f n is a sequence of functions on measurable space x s. Now, saying that f n converges to f point wise means that f n x is same as saying that f n x converges to f of x. These are numbers. So, for every x belonging to x. So, this is converging point wise and you might have already come across something called f n converges to f uniformly. So, what is the difference between uh, this point wise convergence and uniform convergence? So, let us just uh, write down in terms of uh, our definitions of epsilon delta. So, point wise means for every x, for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a n naught which will depend upon the point x and epsilon such that such that f n x minus f of x is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. So, that essentially means that the numbers f n x converges to the number f of x as n goes to infinity. So, given epsilon bigger than 0, there is a stage after which f n x is close to f of x. Of course, this stage may depend upon the point x and the number epsilon. Uh, let us look at what is uh, point wise convergence. So, saying that f n converges to f uniformly means for every x, for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a stage n naught which does not depend on x, which depends only on epsilon such that f n x converges to f of x. That means, that is mod f n x minus f of x is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught and the same stage works for every x. And you must have already seen that the uniform convergence implies point wise convergence. And the converse need not be true. So, uh, uniform convergence implies uh, point wise convergence, the converse need not be true that you must have seen in your earlier courses in analysis. But we are going to look at today's functions which are defined not only on measure spaces actually they are defined on measure spaces, not only on measurable spaces. So, we are going to look at a sequence f n of measurable functions uh, on a measure space x s mu and uh, we had already uh, looked at some uh, uh, concept called convergence almost everywhere. So, let us define formally again that f n converges to f almost everywhere if everything is defined on a measure space x s mu. So, these are functions defined on the measure space x s mu and we say f n converges to f almost everywhere if the set n all x belonging to x say that f n x does not converge to f of x. If that is a set n, then we want n should belong to the sigma algebra s and mu of n should be equal to 0. So, that is convergence almost everywhere. So, obviously, 
point wise convergence implies convergence almost everywhere. Obvious examples one can construct to show that this other way implication uh, need not hold. Convergence almost everywhere need not imply point wise convergence. So, now let us uh, try to look at a relation between convergence uh, almost everywhere and uh, so, let us uh, just recall uh, once again what we are saying. So, we are saying f n converges to f point wise if the sequence of numbers f n x converges to f of x. So, that is same as saying that for every epsilon bigger than 0, there exists a n naught such that uh, which may depend upon the point x and the number epsilon such that absolute value of f n x minus f of x is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. So, the, the numbers uh, f n x are converging, the sequence f n x is converging to f of x. Saying converges uh, f n converges uh, almost everywhere to f means the set of points so where f n x does not converge to f of x that set is a set of measure 0. So, that is convergence almost everywhere or saying that the f n converges uniformly to f meaning for every epsilon there is a stage n naught which depends only on epsilon and not on the point x such that for every x the distance between f n x and f of x is less than epsilon for every n bigger than or equal to n naught and that stage works for every x. So, that is the important thing for uniform convergence. So, uh, uh, instead of writing uh, English all the time whenever f n converges to f point wise, we will write f n arrow with a p above indicating it is a point wise convergence f n converges to f point wise. Convergence almost everywhere will be indicated by f n arrow uh, pointing right side to f with a symbol a dot e dot saying almost everywhere to f, but this is also written as f n uh, converges to f, f n right arrow f a e indicating this convergence is almost everywhere. And similarly, for uniform convergence we will denote it by symbols f n uh, arrow to pointing towards the right and u uh, above the arrow indicating it is uniform convergence. So, as pointed out uh, earlier that f n uh, converges to f uniformly implies f n converges to f point wise and that implies f n converges to f almost everywhere and none of the backward implications uh, is true. So, one can easily construct counter examples to show that convergence almost everywhere uh, need not imply convergence point wise and point wise convergence of uh, need not imply convergence which is uniform. However, we would like to still analyze whether some uh, conclusions can be drawn from uh, point wise convergence or almost everywhere convergence in terms of uh, uniform convergence. So, to analyze that let us assume that f n converges to f almost everywhere and let us take a set E which is uh, in the sigma algebra S such that the measure of this sigma uh, set E is finite and let us be given two numbers epsilon and delta arbitrary then uh, we would like to show that there exists a set E lower epsilon, a measurable set E lower epsilon of and a positive integer n naught uh, which will depend on epsilon and uh, delta such that with the following properties namely that E epsilon is a subset of E and the difference E minus E epsilon is small and for every x belonging to E epsilon on E epsilon f n x minus f of x is less than delta for every n bigger than or equal to n naught and that meaning that uh, this uh, for every x the same stage n naught works. So, essentially uh, saying that the difference between f n and f uh, stays less than delta for all n bigger than n naught the end of the stage does not depend on epsilon. So, let us uh, prove this result. So, to prove this 
So, we are given that F n converges to F almost everywhere. So, let us that means, if we define the set n to be the set of all x belonging to x such that F n x does not converge to F of x, then this set then mu of the set n is equal to 0. So, that is what is uh, given to us. Now, let us uh, look at uh, the set that means on n complement on the complement of this set f n x converges to f of x for every x belonging to n complement. right? So, let us uh, define, so let us write the set uh, E say uh, m. So, we are also given delta. So, let us write E m delta to be the set of all points x belonging to x such that f n x such that the difference f n x minus f of x f n x minus the difference f n of x is less than delta for every n uh, bigger than or equal to m. So, let us look at uh, this set E m delta. So, this set depends on m and on uh, delta. Okay. So, the difference between f n and f is less than delta for every n bigger than or equal to m. So, let us note that these sets E m deltas they belong to the sigma algebra. right? And if the difference between f n and f m uh, f n and f f x is less than delta for all n bigger than m, there is also going to be also true for all n bigger than n plus 1. So, that means that E m delta is an increasing sequence. So, E m delta is a subset of E m plus 1 uh, delta. And uh, further, not only it is increasing, because we are given that f n x converges to f of x uh, for every x. So, that means the sequence it is increasing and uh, on n complement where the, no, the difference is. So, uh, the sequence uh, is increasing sequence and we can say that n complement is contained in union of E m delta m equal to 1 to infinity, because on n complement it converges. So, for every x we can find some stage after which it will be less than for a given delta. So, the fact that on n complement f n x converges to f of x that implies that the set n complement is a subset of the union of E m deltas. right? So, so thus if you look at the sequence E intersection E m complement delta, then this is a decreasing sequence. It is a decreasing sequence of sets and mu of E being finite implies that limit n going to infinity mu of E intersection E m complement delta must be equal to uh, this is a because E m was increasing sequence. So, the complements will be decreasing sequence. So, it must cause converge to intersection uh, of all of them and that is contained in the complement uh, E intersection and complement. So, that is equal to 0 because uh, this sequence of sets uh, decreases to E intersection and complement. So, that is equal to 0. So, the, what does that imply? So, that implies, so saying that this converges to 0. So, that implies that, so given there is a stage. So, let us find some. So, let us find E m, uh, m naught such that mu of E intersection E complement m is m naught is less than uh, epsilon. Okay. 
is less than l. And on E intersection E m naught complement, we know that f n x minus f of x is less than delta for every n greater than or equal to m naught. So, given epsilon, delta and mu of E finite, we have found a stage m naught say that and a set E uh, m naught says that E intersection. So, this is uh, nothing but E minus the set that is less than epsilon and uh, on the uh, set uh, this is less than epsilon and on the set E intersection uh, this this is less than the difference between f n and f is less than uh, delta. So, that uh, proves that uh, required claim namely. So, this proves uh, the required claim that namely if f n converges to f almost everywhere and we are given a set E of positive finite uh, measure mu of E is finite, then for every epsilon and delta we can find uh, a subset E epsilon inside E such that the measure of uh, on E epsilon f n x minus f x is less than delta for every n greater than uh, the stage uh, n naught and the measure of the difference E minus E epsilon is uh, small. So, this is consequence of uh, the fact that f n converges to f almost everywhere and mu of E has got finite measure. As a consequence of this, uh, we prove theorem called Ligorov's theorem. It says that if f n converges to f almost everywhere and E is a set of finite uh, measure, then given epsilon there is a set E epsilon says that measure of uh, the set E minus E epsilon is less than uh, epsilon and f n converges to f uniformly on E epsilon. So, uh, let us uh, prove. Uh, so, we are given that f n converges to f almost everywhere and mu of E is given to be finite. So, by the result just now proved for every delta equal to 1 over n. Let us apply the previous result for epsilon equal to delta equal to 1 over n. There exists a set E n contained in E such that mu of E minus E n is less than 1 over n and on E n on the set, uh, let us write E m here just for the sake of uh, clarity because we are going to apply it for every n and for every E m, uh, we also such that there is a set and a stage n m such that f n of x minus f of x is less than 1 over n uh, m for every n greater than that stage n m. So, this is by the result just now we have proved that whenever f n converges to f almost everywhere and E is a set of finite measure, then with delta equal to 1 over n, okay, sorry this is less than, there is a set E m, so that this is less than epsilon uh, for every epsilon. So, let us do it well epsilon to the power 2 to the power m. So, we are applying the previous result with delta equal to 1 over m, replacing epsilon by epsilon divided by 2 to the power m. So, we will say get a set so, that the difference between E and E m is less than epsilon by 2 to the power m and on the set E m, the difference f m f n minus f x is less than 1 over m for every n bigger than or equal to E m. So, now let us define, so define the set E epsilon equal to uh, intersection of E m m equal to 1 to infinity. Okay. So, with that let us compute that this is the required set. So, uh, mu of E minus uh, E epsilon is equal to mu of union of E minus E m. Okay. m equal to 1 to infinity. Right, because E epsilon is intersection. So, minus that will make it uh, union. 
So, which is less than or equal to sigma m equal to 1 to infinity mu of e minus measure of e minus e m which is less than epsilon by 2 m. So, which is less than or equal to m equal to 1 to infinity of epsilon by 2 to the power m which is less than or equal to epsilon. So, we get that measure of the set e minus e epsilon is less than epsilon for okay, is less than epsilon. Also, if we look at uh, x belongs to e epsilon, so that is equal to intersection of e m, m equal to 1 to infinity. So, what does that imply? So, that means, because it belongs to intersection, so implies that x belongs to e m for every m. Mod of f n x minus f of x will be, because it belongs to e m for every m, so it less than 1 over m for every n bigger than or equal to n m. So, that means, that for every m we can find a stage, so that after which the difference f n x minus f x is less than 1 over m for every x. So, that implies that f n converges to f uniformly on e epsilon, that converges to e epsilon uniformly. So, that proves uh, Igorov's uh, theorem, namely, so this proves Igorov's theorem. So, which says that if f n converges to f almost everywhere, then uh, given any set uh, E of finite uh, measure, we can find a part of it. So, that uh, on that part of that set E, f n converges to f uniformly and the measure of the remaining that is E minus E epsilon is uh, small is less than epsilon. So, for every epsilon, we can find a set E epsilon contained in E such that mu of E minus E epsilon is less than uh, epsilon and on E epsilon, f n converges to f uniformly. So, this is what is called Igorov's theorem. So, as a particular case of Igorov's theorem, in case, uh, so let us define, make a new definition for measurable functions f n and f and a set E in uh, the sigma algebra. One says f n converges almost uniformly to f on E, if for every epsilon, there is a set E epsilon belonging to the sigma algebra such that the measure of the difference E minus E epsilon is small and on E epsilon f converges uniformly. So, such a convergence is called almost uniform convergence. So, it is essentially saying it is uniform except on a set of measure small. So, that is what almost uniform is to be understood. So, Igorov's theorem can be restated as that if f n converges to f almost everywhere on a set E of finite measure, then f n converges to f almost uniformly on E. So, almost everywhere convergence implies almost uniform convergence on every set of finite uh, positive measure. So, in particular case, when mu of x is finite, this will imply f n converges to f almost everywhere on the set x. So, will imply that f n converges to f almost uniformly on x. So, on finite measure spaces, almost everywhere convergence implies convergence which is almost uh, uniform. And in fact, converse of this proposition is also true when we have got uh, the measure space finite. So, the converse says that if mu of x is finite and f n converges to f almost uniformly on x, then f n converges to f almost everywhere. So, the proof of that is almost obvious, because by the given hypothesis for every integer n, we can find a set f n uh, in S in the sigma algebra, say that the measure of the set f n is small and f n converges to f uniformly on the complement of it. So, uh, let us define the um, set f, which is intersection of all these f n's, then measure of the set f is less than or equal to measure of each f n, which is less than 1 over n. So, the set f 
is a uh, set of measure 0 and outside this if f if uh, a point uh, x uh, belongs to f complement then that will mean it belongs to some f n uh, complement for some n and on that uh, convergence is uniform. So, f n converges to f in particular. So, that will imply that uh, on f complement f n x converges to f of x. So, that uh, proves uh, the converse part of uh, uh, the Igorov theorem for finite uh, measure uh, spaces. So, let us draw a picture and try to see what these implications uh, mean. So, we have got uh, convergences one is which is convergence point wise. So, this is the point wise convergence and we have got convergence almost everywhere convergence which is uniform and convergence which is almost uniform. So, we know that the point wise convergence implies convergence which is almost everywhere and convergence uniform implies which is point wise convergence. So, convergence uniform implies convergence point wise and point wise implies almost everywhere and the other way around inequality this is not true and this implication is also not true in general. And we just now uh, showed that convergence almost everywhere obviously, it does not imply this convergence and uh, convergence uniform okay, obviously, implies uh, convergence almost uniform because almost uniform means outside a set of measure small. So, this is uniform implies convergence uh, almost uh, uniform also. right? So, almost everywhere convergence okay, or point wise convergence cannot imply this because it does not imply this. So, and this implication convergence almost everywhere obviously, does not imply in general this. Okay. But what we can say is that when it is finite, so almost this implies this when mu of x is finite and of course, this also implies the other way around when this is finite. So, this is what uh, one way almost everywhere implies convergence uh, almost uniform that is Igorov's theorem and the converse uh, always hold. So, these two are same if underlying measure space is a finite measure space. These are the implications uh, that uh, uh, we can say are true. Okay? Right. So, next let us uh, point out the fact that uh, Igorov's theorem says that almost everywhere convergence on finite measure spaces gives rise to almost uniform convergence. And this can be uh, used to prove a important theorem called Leuzen's theorem which says that if f is a real valued function on reals which is measurable and epsilon greater than 0 is arbitrary, then there exists a continuous function g such that where f differs from g is a set of measure small. So, what it says that every measurable function is almost continuous you can look at it this way. So, we will not prove this result. So, basically the idea is on every uh, interval one tries to apply this uh, apply Igorov's theorem and uh, then uh, try to uh, patch it up. So, those interested should look up the textbook referred for this result saying that Igorov's theorem has an application namely every uh, measurable real valued measurable function on reals is almost equal to a continuous function. That means, the set of we can find a given any epsilon one can find a continuous function such that uh, the difference f x not equal to g x is the measure of that set is small. So, these are the relationships uh, between uh, point wise convergence, convergence almost everywhere, uniform convergence and almost uniform convergence. But keep in mind almost uniform convergence is not uniform almost everywhere. So, these two are different things almost uniform means that except outside a set of measure small the convergence is uniform, but if you say uniform almost everywhere that means outside a set of measure 0 the convergence is uniform. So, almost uniform is not same as 
uh, uniform almost everywhere. So, keep that in mind. And next, uh, we would like to discover another uh, important uh, uh, modes of convergence called convergence in measure. Uh, this uh, uh, mode of convergence is very useful in the theory of probability analyzing uh, what are called uh, convergence of random variables. So, we will not go into the probabilistic aspect of this, we will just uh, look at uh, the measure theoretic uh, aspect of uh, what is convergence in measure. So, a sequence of uh, measurable functions f n is said to converge in measure to a measurable function f on a measure space x s mu. If for every epsilon look at the set where f n minus f x is bigger than or equal to epsilon. So, this is the kind of set where f n is not going to the difference remains bigger than epsilon. So, collect all such points and if look at the measure of this set, if the measure of this set goes to 0 becomes smaller and smaller as n goes to infinity, then we say f n converges to f in measure. So, saying f n converges to f in measure is for every epsilon, this is important for every epsilon bigger than 0, look at the measure of the set where f n minus f is bigger than or equal to epsilon, measure of that set limit n going to infinity should be equal to 0. So, this is called convergence in measure for function and this we will write as f n with an arrow f and above the arrow we will put the symbol m indicating that f n converges to f in measure. Let us look at some examples to understand convergence in measure vis a vis almost everywhere convergence. So, let us look at the sequence of functions f n which are defined on the Lebesgue measure space or uh, Lebesgue measure space uh, that is real line Lebesgue measurable sets and the length function. And let us take the function f n to be equal to the indicator function of n to n plus 1. So, what we are doing is we are f n is the indicator function of the interval n to n plus 1. So, if this is a line, this is uh, 1, 2, 3, n, n plus 1. So, what is f 1? So, f 1 is the indicator function of 1 to 2. So, f 1 is nothing but the function. So, this is f 1. Okay what is f 2? So, this is f 1. What is f 2? f 2 is the indicator function from 2 to 3. So, this is f 2. So, and this is f 3 and so on and this is f n. So, what is happening is uh, the function f n is nothing but uh, the constant function 1 on the interval n to n plus 1. So, this graph is shifting as you move. Clearly, f n x converges to f x for every x and that uh, uh, is obvious because if we are given a point uh, x somewhere. So, here is a point x then after some stage we can find a n which is bigger than this. So, you can find something some n naught which is bigger than this then f n naught of x will be equal to 0 which is. so that means, for every x we can find a stage n naught so that this is equal to 0 that will happen for every n bigger than that. That means, the f n x converges to f of x which is identically equal to 0. So, the sequence of functions f n x this sequence of functions point wise it converges to the function f of x which is identically 0. So, f n converges to f identically 0 point wise. But let us look at the measure of the set where f n minus f is bigger than or equal to say 1. So, because f n gives the value 1 or 0 only. So, the set where f n x differs from f of x is precisely the interval n to n plus 1. So, Lebesgue measure of the set where f n x minus f of x is bigger than or equal to epsilon equal to 1 is equal to 1 and that never goes to 0. So, this is a sequence of measurable functions which converges 
point wise, but it does not converge in uh, measure to the function f identically equal to 0. So, point wise convergence need not imply convergence in measure. Point wise convergence, convergence almost everywhere in particular also does not imply convergence in measure. Let us uh, look at another example, which is uh, easy to describe pictorially. So, what we are going to look at is look at the interval 0 1, divide it into two equal parts. So, that is two equal parts 0, half and 1. At the next stage, divide it into four equal uh, parts 1, 2. So, that is 0, 1 by 4, half, 3 by 4 and uh, 1 and so on. So, define f 1 to be the indicator function of the whole interval 0 to 1. Define f 2 to be the indicator function of the interval 0 to half. So, this is f 2, which is the indicator function of 0 to half and this is f 3. So, which is equal to indicator function of half to 1. So, that is uh, f 3. Similarly, this is f 4, this is f 5, this is f 6, f 7 and so on. So, each f n is nothing but the indicator function of interval with end points, which are obtained by dividing the interval into uh, equal parts uh, at every stage. So, it is a the indicator function of let us write a interval i uh, k n, where the length of i k n is equal to 1 over 2 to the, it is going to be depending on which stage, it is uh, something like 1 over 2 to the power uh, interval of length 1 over 2 to the power n or something like this, because it is going to be shrinking. right? So, if this is how the sequence f n is obtained, then it is clear that the set on which f n is 1 is becoming smaller and smaller. So, guess is this f n converges to f identically 0 in measure, but this sequence f n does not converge to f point wise. And for that, the reason is given any point x, given any point x, we can uh, always find uh, some f n like this, where the value of the function is f n is going to be equal to 1. Because what is happening is f 1 is the indicator function of the whole uh, interval, f 2 is this. So, the set over which the function is non 0 is taking the value 1 is uh, fluctuating, right? but it is moving at, at, at no stage it becomes 0 and actually at every point x there will be some f n which will be giving the value 1. So, this will not converge uh, almost uh, um, uh, everywhere or point wise. So, this will be example of a sequence which converges in measure, but not point wise. One can formally write this uh, as follows to write this uh, more rigorously, let us uh, look at uh, for every n, first of all choose a unique integer m, say that n lies between 2 to the power m and uh, 2 to the power m plus 1. Okay. So, that is obvious that for any n, you can find a integer with this uh, property. Okay. And now, next look at a integer k between for any integer k between uh, 0 and 2 to the power m, this number n can be written as 2 to the power m plus k. right? So, because n to n plus 1 can be divided into uh, intervals of length 1 over 2 to the power m and once you do that, so you can find a, a k say that this n is equal to 2 to the power m plus k. So, what we are saying is every uh, natural number n can be expressed uniquely as in the form ev to every n you can associate a pair namely small m comma k, where m is such that n lies between 2 to the power m 
less than or equal to and less than 2 to the power m plus 1 and k is between 0 and 2 to the power m. So, this uh, correspondence n with these pairs is unique and obviously, as uh, n goes to infinity, this m will also go to infinity and conversely, as m goes to infinity, n goes to infinity. So, how is this uh, function f n defined? So, define f n for any n, represent it uniquely as k plus 2 to the power m and take f n to be the indicator function of i k m. So, so this is uh, the interval starting at k by 2 to the power m and going to k plus 1 2 to the power m. So, that means, it is a interval of length 1 over 2 to the power m. So, this is uh, so f n is 1 on this interval and you can see that this interval is shifting, but never becoming uh, is becoming smaller and smaller, but never vanishing. So, f n is a sequence of measurable functions, because they are indicator functions of intervals and for every x you can find a stage. Okay. If n is for any n you can find a if n is equal to this we can find a stage. So, that x will also belong to a interval uh, of starting with L 0 with the base as 2 to the power m plus 1. So, that we mean that for every n there is a stage n dash says that f n n dash of uh, f f n dash at the point x is also equal to 1. So, that will prove that the sequence f n does not converge to the function identically 0 point wise. On the other hand, it is quite obvious that the set of points where this is bigger than epsilon for every epsilon bigger than 1, it is empty set and less than or equal to 1, that is the interval which is becoming smaller and smaller. So, that says that this is a sequence of functions which, uh, so that will go to 0. So, this is a sequence of functions which converges in measure, but not point wise. So, what we have uh, shown uh, is that the convergence in measure is neither implied by point wise convergence or convergence almost everywhere and neither implies convergence in measure. So, convergence in measure and point wise convergence uh, are neither implied or implied by each other. So, these are uh, uh, this is the concept of convergence in measure uh, which is quite different from point wise uh, convergence. However, when the underlying space is uh, uh, with finite measure, one can draw some conclusions and uh, because in the theory of probability, the underlying measure space has got total mass 1. So, we want to uh, look at this concept of convergence in measure, when the underlying measure space has got a finite uh, measure. So, so, we want to prove that if mu of x is finite and f n converges to f almost everywhere, then f n converges also in measure to the set f. So, what we want to show is that convergence uh, for finite measure spaces, convergence almost everywhere implies convergence in measure. So, let us look at a, a proof of this fact. So, recall that saying that f n converges in measure to f is same as saying, so this is what we want to show, we want to prove f n converges to f in measure. So, what we have to show? We have to show that for every epsilon, if we look at the set of those points where f n minus f is bigger than or equal to epsilon, then the measure of uh, uh, this set goes to 0 as n goes to infinity for every epsilon. So, let us call this uh, set x belonging to x f n x minus f of x bigger than or equal to epsilon a set. So, it depends on epsilon and it depends on n. So, let us call this set as a n epsilon. So, a n epsilon is equal to the set of points where f n minus f is bigger than or equal to epsilon and we want to show that the measure of this set goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. Now, let us uh, observe that a n epsilon is obviously a subset of the union of the sets a m epsilons from m equal to n, because 
this is one of those sets in the union. So, this is so showing that mu of a n epsilon goes to 0 is same as is enough if we can show that measure of this union goes to 0. But look at this uh, unions a m epsilon m bigger than or equal to n. This is a sequence of sets as n increases this union is going to become smaller and smaller. So, this is a sequence of uh, sets which is uh, decreasing. So, it is a decreasing sequence of sets and it decreases to. So, where it will decrease? It will decrease to the intersection of the sets n equal to 1 to infinity of these sets. And mu of uh, the set x being finite. So, this is a sequence of sets which is decreasing to this set and mu of x being finite implies mu of the limit is equal to limit of the uh, mu of the sets. So, limit n going to infinity mu of this is equal to this. And let us observe that mu of the set which is intersection n equal to 1 to infinity union m equal to 1 to infinity a m epsilon. What is this set? This if x belongs to this set that means that for every n there is a m such that x belongs to a m for some m bigger than or equal to n. Now, that is same as saying so which is same as saying so x does not converge to f of x because a m epsilon is the set where is bigger than epsilon. What it says is that this is a set okay, where f n does not converge to f of x and but we are given f n converges to f almost everywhere. So, this set has got measure 0. So, uh, this limit is equal to measure 0. right? So, that proves the fact that this is of measure 0. So, that proves that limit of a n epsilon is 0 that means, f n converges to f n measure. So, we started looking at the convergence in measure and we have proved uh, given examples to illustrate that neither point wise convergence implies convergence in measure nor convergence in measure implies point wise convergence. However, when the underlying space is finite convergence almost everywhere does imply uh, convergence in measure. So, we will continue this uh, study of uh, convergence in measure and also look at its relations with uh, what is called convergence in uh, mean or convergence in LP spaces. So, we will do that in the next lecture. Thank you.